Motion capture has been quietly changing the entertainment industry for decades. It's a powerful tool. Using a combination of cameras, sensors, and software, mocap systems accurately record body and facial movements, which are then used to drive lifelike avatars in movies, TV shows, and video games, saving countless hours of painstaking manual animation. And while motion capture has historically been reserved for blockbusters like Lord of the Rings and AAA games like Call of Duty, these systems are quickly falling in price and landing in the hands of consumers. This is me. Yes, as a slightly creepy AR emoji. But despite the squick factor, all of this motion capture processing and animation is happening on a phone. And in real time. Samsung's latest flagship, the Galaxy S9, has motion capture tech built right in. Tech that only a few years ago would have been reserved for top tier studios. And Samsung's not the only one. The iPhone X's true depth sensor is even more powerful, accurately mapping up to 30,000 facial reference points, which can then be used as mocap data. So anyways, um, I guess it's a pretty good test, whatever, right? While it's easy to take pocket-sized mocap systems for granted today, this technology has been 100 years in the making. In 1915, Max Fleischer, the animator behind Betty Boop and Popeye, invented a technique called rotoscope, wherein animators would film an actor, project that performance onto a transparent plane, and then trace over their movements frame by frame. Rotoscoping is the reason Snow White feels so fluid, and it's even been used more recently in projects like The Secret of Nim and A Scanner Darkly. By the 1960s, technological advances had ushered in a new era of motion capture. The Animac is the grandfather of modern mocap, invented by Lee Harrison III in 1959. Using analog circuits and cathode ray tubes, Harrison figured out a way to record and animate movement in real time, back in the days when simple computers were the size of entire rooms. My mouth is made to move by my voice. The rest of me moves because some guy in a harness moves. Animac was the precursor to the white spotted bodysuits we associate with mocap today. While we've come a long way from cathode ray tubes and frame-by-frame -frame tracing, motion capture technology is still evolving at a rapid clip. In the past few years, advances in computing have opened up brand new worlds for motion capture, making a serious impact in fields like physical therapy and autonomous driving. Mocap is also a critical aspect in the production of films like Ready Player One, and it's the reason there are so many fancy dance moves in Fortnite. You won't find Vicon's name in the credits of any major movies, but the company's technology is responsible for creating some of the most iconic motion capture moments of past decades. We did a deal with the motion capture guys, which was basically, listen, if you can do it at the same time as we're shooting without uh, holding us up one minute, then we'll be happy. So he doesn't have to do mocap on this now? No, and no. Some of the, this is the first time in the history of cinema this has ever been? I don't know. Yeah. We'll say yes. We'll say yes. Vicon built the mocap systems used in Titanic, Marvel's Avengers Universe, Paddington, Ready Player One, and a slew of Star Wars films, including The Last Jedi. In games, Vicon is partnered with Epic Games, the creator of Unreal Engine, Gears of War, and Fortnite, for more than a decade, and its systems have powered award-winning experiences in Hellblade, Senua's Sacrifice, and Life is Strange, to name a few. Vicon is a solid barometer for the state of the motion capture industry. After all, it's been in the business for more than 30 years. Vicon, which stands for Video Converter, which not a lot of people know, kind of came together and found that there was a need for video-based measurement tools for clinical gait analysis, amongst other applications. The very first Vicon system actually shipped in 1981. There were, I think, three that went to different places. One of them was University of West Virginia to do sheep studies on, on a treadmill a sheep on a treadmill. When a judge gets to the lamb at showtime, they want a nice butt on him. And that was the very beginning, and I mean, we're talking a bunch of video cameras, hand digitizing all the information. In the early days of motion capture, animators had to manually digitize an actor's performance, assigning markers to individual body parts, one frame at a time. And then the PC industry boomed. In the 90s, processing speeds exploded and creators took advantage of multi-threading technology and the ability to use the GPU as a processor. These advances are still important to mocap today, especially in the video game industry. GPU uh, access is a big thing, especially now for being able to do real time into game engines because game engines now have the processing power to generate hundreds of thousands of polygons in real time. 
Nowadays, animators don't have to assign mocap markers frame by frame. This process is automated and performances are tracked in real time. I am all suited up and honestly, it did not take that long. So putting on the suit, I mean, took about five minutes and then these markers took maybe five minutes. And then putting my body into the computer took maybe a minute. I had to do a few Pilates stretches. I had to lift my legs and move my arms. But honestly, after a minute, I was in the computer. I was on the screen uh, and I was a character. I could be a spaceship engineer. Many have not, have not passed this combination. Oh no, I will pass this combination. It's gonna happen. It's like petting a sheep. Okay. Even if one of the passive light reflecting markers dotting an actor's body falls off during a shoot, it's no big deal. Working with passive optical markers means if it falls, it doesn't matter anymore because the algorithm can handle it. Their gods can see into your mind. They will use this power to destroy you. They will stop me. Mocap technology is evolving faster than ever. In 2016, Ninja Theory, Epic Games, Vicon, and a handful of other partners demonstrated the remarkable real-time motion capture system used in Hellblade Senua's Sacrifice. That demo sparked a fire among gaming fans as they witnessed the future of the industry. An actress's performance was transferred, live, from reality into a video game, her character coming to life before the audience's eyes. However, that demo wasn't exactly a plug-and-play situation. Hellblade was phenomenal. That real-time live demo that they did actually at SIGGRAPH was unbelievable. But back then, there was a lot more that went into the production behind the scenes to get everything prepared, to get to the point where it was real-time. There was a lot more understanding of, okay, what are the motions that we're gonna be doing? Hello, I'm Siren, and I'm a digital human. And today, things are only speeding up. At the Game Developers Conference in March, Vicon and Epic Games showed off the latest in mocap tech with the Siren demo. Live on stage and on the GDC show floor, an actress in a mocap suit walked around and talked while a digital likeness mimicked her every move in high definition 3D. While the Siren demo was impressive, in practice it didn't seem to offer anything new for fans who had already witnessed the magic behind Hellblade. However, the true evolution happened behind the scenes. For Siren, the mocap portion was much easier and much shorter than it was for Hellblade. So if they were investing the same amount of time for a project, let's just say it's 100 hours, and the mocap part took 80 for Senua Sacrifice, for Siren it took an hour. What are you gonna do with all that extra time? They invested in more realism, more polygons. By things becoming faster, easier, and more efficient, you can do more with it. It doesn't mean that people are now making games in you know, a tenth of the time, means they're making better games with all the extra time they have. Motion capture technologies are growing faster and cheaper every day. Vicon has motion capture systems in universities, independent gaming studios, medical facilities, and even high schools. Active trackers that used to cost $300 a pop have been replaced by passive trackers that sell for just $5. Entire mocap systems used to cost $100,000 at least, and that figure has fallen dramatically. This means mocap can be applied to an even broader range of fields. In fact, gaming and film compose just a quarter of Vicon's overall business. About 50% of our business is biomechanics, mostly gait analysis, the study of how people walk. That's actually our bread and butter. Where it helps medical professionals diagnose, track, and treat patients across a range of illnesses and impairments. The final 25% of Vicon's business is dedicated to robotics, including VR applications in autonomous driving. Accessible facial recognition and motion capture is a massive benefit to many of these industries. Though as with all technology, these systems can also be used for nefarious purposes. There's a cottage industry of people creating false and misleading news stories online. And combined with tools like Google's new duplex AI system. Is the Google Assistant actually calling a real salon to schedule the appointment for you? Let's listen. Hi, I'm calling to book a women's haircut for a client. Um, I'm looking for something on May 3rd. Sure, give me one second. Mm-hmm. These folks can produce realistic-looking videos featuring notable people saying or doing things they never actually said or did. It may sound basic, but how we move forward in the age of information is going to be the difference between whether we survive or whether we become some kind of fucked-up dystopia. The more accessible these tools become, the more likely they are to be used in malicious ways. 
I think that that's just kind of the nature of all technology right now, right? It's not just motion capture. Any technology is advancing so fast that it can be used to confuse people. We have to be aware of what's going on and perhaps in the future there will be protections across all technology platforms to prevent immoral use of the technology. MoCap is only going to grow as an industry, spreading into new corners of the technology world and beyond. The next big boom will most likely come with the advent of quantum computing. Obviously, the holy grail for motion capture for everybody is markerless. Once you start getting into quantum computing, things are just going to become instantaneous and so fast that you really won't even have to worry about any of the processing. And then again, it's going to be just like anything else. What are you going to do with the extra time? You're going to push things even further forward. And that's definitely in the five to 10 year range as far as capabilities go. Mm -hmm.